Demonstrating Humility No matter our roles and responsibilities in the church, we are to serve one another humbly in love. Here's Dr. Gene Getz. 1 Peter 5.1, he turns to the elders and he says, Therefore, as a fellow elder and a witness to the sufferings of the Messiah and also a participant in the glory about to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you. Now, throughout this whole passage, dealing with elders and dealing with young men and young women, as well as the whole body, he focuses on humility. But let me, think for, let me just think with you for a moment about the humility that Peter is demonstrating here by saying he is a fellow elder. He could have said, as an apostle, but he didn't. He says, I'm a fellow elder with you in the midst of what's happening to you. And I think that in his mind, he's going back to Matthew 16, 18, to a statement where Jesus said, You're Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. Peter was a very important stone in that foundation of the church. And for him now to say, as the great apostle to the Jews, I'm a fellow elder, is a statement of humility himself. In view of, of his failures, I think he thought back of his failures. Matthew 26, 33, 35. Peter said at one point, even if everyone runs away because of you, I'll never run away. I will never run away. That's arrogance. Even if I have to die with you, Peter told him, I will never deny you. That's arrogance. And by the way, all the other disciples said the same thing. But Peter becomes the focus of that. And he did run away. That was a very humbling experience. That he that is greatest is to be servant of all. I think he went back to that place there on the Sea of Galilee. After they had eaten breakfast, all the disciples had left Jerusalem, they're there in Galilee. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? You said you did. You said, if all forsake you, I won't. I think that these there refers to the other apostles that are sitting there. Well, yes, Lord, he said, you, you know that I love you. He doesn't really deal with the issue. So Jesus says, feed my lambs. Who are the lambs? The lambs are the other apostles. They haven't grown up yet. They need a leader. And the second time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Well, yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. He said, then shepherd my sheep because they're going to grow, but they're going to need a leader. And you've got to become a shepherd if you're going you're to lead them. And then he asked him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. And I think what he was simply saying, I get the point. You said I would deny you three times. And now you've just asked me three times if I love you more than these. You know that I love you. And then Jesus said, well, then feed my sheep. You're getting ready. And I think that as Peter's penning these words, as a fellow elder, it reflects his humility as a shepherd. Because later he says, I want you to be good shepherds. He learned that through his own failure. But the other thing that happened here was in relationship to his death. And this is significant as he's writing this letter because Jesus said back there on that shore about 30 years before, I assure you when you were young, you would tie your belt, you would walk wherever you wanted, Peter, but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you do not want to go. He said this, John says, to signify by what kind of death he would glorify God. And tradition says he was crucified upside down. And after saying this, he said, follow me. And Peter has followed Jesus Christ all the way. And as he writes and says to these individuals, these elders, he's writing out of humility. Now, as I said, he goes on to address the younger when he says, you younger men, that could actually be translated younger, meaning men and women, be subject to the elders. And all of you clothe yourselves with humility. 
See, that's the theme. Towards one another, because God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that He may exalt you in due time. And as we go back, and as we look at the, what He said to the elders, what are the specific marks of humility that Peter outlined for spiritual leaders? Well, look at that passage. They're beautiful. These are marks of humility for spiritual leaders. Not overseeing out of compulsion, but freely. Not for money, though it's all right to be paid, but that shouldn't be your motivation, but eagerly. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, not domineering, controlling, but being examples to the flock. In other words, be servant leaders.